In the third year of the war against Ukraine, the Russian Federation has started talking about total dependence on China. This topic was unexpectedly raised by the Kremlin propagandist Vladimir Solovyov on his talk show on the state TV channel Russia One. Solovyov complained about the decline of the Russian automobile industry. In this sphere, society and the army have found themselves in total dependence on China. And look at what the fighters of the Russian armed forces drive. What? Russian-made cars? You have to be a great patriot to drive a UAZ Patriot. Because it costs a fortune, breaks down all the time, and the spare parts are crazy. That's why the guys drive Chinese ones. But now they need motorcycles. Russian ones? No, Russian motorcycles don't exist. And what about the buggies, for example? Who supplies them to us? Why can China do it? But we have some kind of binomial theorem every time? The propagandist was indignant. However, he did not name the person who has been in power in the Russian Federation for 25 years and who brought the situation to a catastrophe. Last year, bilateral trade was at a record high of $240 billion and China is now Russia's number one trade partner. But Russia is only number six for China, as per a report by the Council on Foreign Relations. Russia has also increased its international trade in rubles and the yuan's share in the import side has risen from 5% to 20 to 25% since the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, noted Rybakova in a December paper she co-authored for the Center for a New American Security. The share of yuan in the domestic market has also increased from less than 1% pre-February 2022 to more than 30% now, the paper noted. While they were pushed together by sanctions, the fact is that Russia needs China more, said Rybakova, firstly as a buyer of its oil, especially as sanctions have curtailed its market and also as a supplier of military components. About 70% to 90% of components in the Russian military is Western made, said Rybakova, explaining that China produces these parts for Western clients and manufacturers ship them to Russia, a process that offers deniability for the West. Russia will want to do everything it can to keep China close, especially as it is facing the very real threat of global isolation, particularly from more consequential powers, Michael Kugelman, the director of the South Asia Institute at the Wilson Center, told Al Jazeera. Бля, короче, хуй что происходит, блядь, ну был хлопок, блядь. И вот сейчас вот горит что-то. Да, горит что-то, что-то въебало, короче, на грейсе нахуй. Заебатый был хлопок. А потому что ночь уже холодно. Бля, нихуя там дымит. Но это не самой Гресс, это где-то вот с краю. Ну вот сюда, ближе, короче. Да, не... Right now, the Ukrainian armed forces, consisting of about 500 people, are trying to break through in the area of Nekotayevka and the Shebakino checkpoint in the Belgorod region. The Ukrainian armed forces are trying to break through the border of the Belgorod region, the situation is difficult but under control, Governor Vyacheslav Gladkov said. According to Russian information, there is a battle going on near Nekotayevka, there, Ukrainian soldiers in several infantry fighting vehicles, numbering up to 200 people, landed at positions near the state border and tried to cross it, 
ours immediately covered them with artillery, after which the battle began. At the same time, about 300 Ukrainian armed forces soldiers went to the Shebekino checkpoint. There is a battle going on there now. Our border guards fought back, then helicopters arrived and fired at the enemy group. Today is exactly three weeks since the Ukrainian soldiers invaded the Kursk region. In the Belgorod region, the militants used the same tactics as in early August. Another Russian channel, shot, claimed that Ukrainian forces had been pushed back from Nekotayevka after suffering losses and claimed that no clashes had taken place at Shebekino. There have been multiple signs that Ukraine's incursion into Kursk Oblast is spilling over to Belgorod Oblast. A unit of the Ukrainian 252nd Battalion appeared to have entered the village of Poraz on August 10. Russia also claimed that Ukraine unsuccessfully attacked the Kalatilovka border checkpoint on August 12. Previously, Shebekino became a key flashpoint during a cross-border incursion carried out last year by anti-Kremlin militias fighting on Ukraine's side. Belgorod Oblast is lodged between Russia's Kursk and Voronezh regions and borders Ukraine's Sumy, Kharkiv, and Luhansk Oblasts.